Thank you once again for joining us this Thursday morning as we continue to handle the interesting conversations that we are pulling, not conversations, interesting uh, value system that we are drawing from the book of James. We so far have handled several packets which in case you're joining us for the first time, do well to do a recap with the other subsequent episodes that have gone forth last week and the last three days. Um, but then, in the interest of time, because we still have quite an amount to cover today, I want us to go straight into uh, chapter number 2, verse 13. Father, we thank you for this day. We welcome your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will release the kind of grace, O oh God, that makes ministry easy and release the spirit of revelation upon us. And dear Father, help us to change and align our lives and pattern our behavior according to the word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, we started handling the three central themes of the book of James, of course, captured in verse 19 of chapter 1 that says, So then, my brethren, uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger or slow to wrath. And uh, we established uh, yesterday that it's important to be swift to hear in trials. We should be very swift to hear in trials because sometimes our faith is predicated upon what we hear or also our fear, the fears that we have are either going to take toll on us based on what we also hear. There are those, if you hear something that uh, potentially can inspire hope or it can also uh, inspire fear. It can either inspire faith or it can paralyze the same faith. So we established that it's important to hear in trial so that your hearing leads you to specific actions. Your hearing leads you to doing and then we establish that in verse 21 of chapter 1 to 27. And then your hearing should lead you into impartial and merciful action. That is chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. Today, we are going to handle your hearing should lead to a faithful action. Your hearing should lead to a faithful action. It says this, for judgment is without mercy... Uh, to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. But then verse 13, I mean 14, all the way to the last verse of this chapter 2, it says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? He has faith but does not have works. Can the faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of food, daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, or for the body what does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead being alone, 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith with your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Verse 19, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe. And tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, 
Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see when that man when you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Verse 25. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works? Then she received uh, when she received the messengers and sent them the other way. For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. The concept of faith, uh, and especially in trials, is that every time you have options, when you have options, so many options, it's difficult to appropriate those options and give them or bracket them as faith. But when you have no option, you have come to the end of all your alternatives and all your networks and all your relationships and all that you trust. When you come to an end and the only option remaining is God, then the step that you will take at the end of all the options will be a step of faith. It will be a step of faith. Many people say that they have faith, but the whole truth is this. They have guts. They just have guts. Many people will say they have faith in the face of different trials. Because allow me to take us back to the book of Hebrews, just a book behind, and I show you what it really means sometimes to have faith. We have relegated faith to be a transactional tool and an acquisition platform. And yes, it delivers. It delivers. We have also relegated faith to only imply the victories that we experience as a result. So when we see someone having bought this, having gotten this, having, we say that this person now has faith because he's built a house, he's raised children, he's you know, bought a car and all that. Well, that has got its own aspect. But then allow me to just give it a different flip because there is the faith that actually overcomes, but it is not in itself standardized according to human settings as victorious, yet it delivered victory. My God. Chapter 11 of faith let me start from verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. It's a victorious experience. And true to that fact, it was action-based. They went around the, uh, the, 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 the walls seven times, and on the seven, I mean, they screamed and all that. It was action-based, and it delivered an outcome. All right? By faith, the hallowed Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Again, it's a victorious story. And what more shall I say? Because for the time would fail me to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, also David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Victorious story. Stopped, I mean, uh, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence, the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned the flight of the enemies, of their aliens, women received their dead, raised back to life. Up to verse 35 is a victorious description. Again, I said, truth is descriptive. It's a victorious description. I mean, 
everything is pointing towards a huge celebration. It's an overcoming, it's a succeeding, it is delivering specific outcomes. But then from verse 35 onwards, it brings another aspect of faith that may not so reflect, be reflective of the victories that you have seen that are manifest in the experience of those who are of the beneficiaries. Listen to this, verse 35, 4, 6 rather. Others, 35, I mean, yes, 35. Women received their dead raised to life, but then it continues to say, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Does that look like a good story? Does that even look like it was something to do with victory? Being tortured is not a good experience, but the action enduring to the end is delivering a crown of life to this particular person going through this. Hmm. 36, still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, and yes, of chains and imprisonment 37, they were stoned, they were sewn into two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheep's skin and goat's skin, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. 39, and all this having obtained a good report, a good testimony through faith, my God, through faith, they did not receive the promise, but God, verse 40, I was looking for this, but God having provided something better for us that they should be made perfect apart from us. These portions of scripture have got two sides to it. When we, have, when we are swift to hear, quick to hear in trials, then we get the instructions to know what to endure, what not to endure. What to respond to, what not to respond to. Sometimes there are people who have picked up battles, they shouldn't have picked up that battle, even from the word go. They should have just let go, slide, move away from it. But there are those who have picked up unnecessary battles that have really literally handed them over into a mess. I keep saying, if you fight with a pig, one will enjoy the game, one will come out dirty. Choose which one you will play. The concept of being slow to hear in trials is so that we get the instructions that will lead us into specific actions. When you hear right, you act right. When you hear right, you act right. And so the book of James comes to demonstrate to us that the faith that we process, I mean uh, profess, should be accompanied by corresponding actions that now hand us over to the hall of fame with faith. Sometimes what we call faith is not actually faith. Um, uh, every time I read that portion of scripture, I remember uh, the late Reverend Becky. A few hours before she went to be with the Lord, um, I had the privilege of being with her at the hospital that um, at the hospital before she passed on and. One thing she kept saying, and it resonated with the scripture that we've just read, Hebrews chapter number 11 from verse 35 to 40. She kept saying, I believe God is faithful. I believe God is faithful. If there was a demonstration of faith, even to the last time of her breath, it was personified 
That scripture was personified in the life of Reverend Becky. And she said, I still believe God is a healer. What is taking her out is sickness. But she's not wavering in faith. She still believes God is a healer. That day I picked up critical lessons that this faith is not a transactional component. This faith is a reality of living. Sometimes it will hand over you to victories of life, but also it can translate you into the next victory of life where you conquer death. <laughs> where you conquer death and transition victoriously into the arms of our Lord and Savior. When you read some scriptures about being swift to hear in trials, you ask yourself whether what you're reading is actually practical or it's just a good vibe or a good narrative or a good literature. This is beyond literature. This is beyond literature. This is an active and living vibe. It's an active and a living word. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. Every time we read the scripture and we realize that this faith is demonstrable, then let's not just be sayers, let's be doers. Because confessing the word and doing the word are totally, they are not, they are those who are, perfect, they have perfected the art of confessing the word. And there is a level, an aspect of it, there is a place for confessing the word. But I think in my own imagination, there is the aspect which is far much better of doing the word. Because activated word confirms the confession is true. Confessing without doing is not really complete. Confessing with doing makes the confession a reality. May the Lord help us to live this word practically and make it a reality. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, dear Father, for helping us to navigate through this word. Help us to be doers and not just hear us in Jesus' name. Amen.